Julia Jolie, an immigrant woman living in California. And I want to know how to make it in America. You might already know that I love being all glamorous on a budget, but in this show, I want to know all the tips and tricks of America's top entrepreneurs. My guest today is Jed Ryan. Jed is a movie producer and actor, best known for Seinfeld, Falling Overnight, and The Outsiders. Jed, thank you so much for being on the show and My welcome. Pleasure. My pleasure. So, I think being a movie producer is one of the coolest jobs you can have. Oh. How did you get into it? Well, um, so there's a long story to it. So, I, um, I started acting when I was four years old. Um, by happenstance, just kind of random. I grew up here in Los Angeles. I have family rooted in LA, no family in the entertainment business. My brother played baseball with some kids who were actors and their mother hawked on my parents to take them to their agent for a long time and my parents actually did not want to do that. And then they made a decision if they were holding me back from doing something I might be good at and they took me to this agent. A week later I booked my first national commercial and then it didn't stop for 25 years. So I think we have a lot of viewers who would love to become uh, movie producers. So sure. how do you get into it? Okay, that's a great question. There's so many ways to get into it. Um, some people, I mean, look at my story. I mean, it's like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's typical in some ways because usually actors, they don't tend to go into producing. Producing is a much more nuts and bolts kind of job. It's not as glamorous as it may seem. It's a very, very intricate, logistics oriented, it, it's a lot of coordination and it's a lot of management of a lot of different kinds of personalities. But, okay, so this is how I would suggest to anybody. Stop talking about it. Yeah. Stop trying to meet people to get you to let them do something and get a team of people around you, people who love what you do, who are passionate as you are, and make something. Find a writer, find a short film. Make that into actual action piece. Make your movie. Do 10 minutes, submit it to festivals, go the festival route, get recognition with it. Do it again if it doesn't work. Do it again if it doesn't work. Don't stop the process. So how do you find the scripts that you want to produce? Scripts come in all different ways. Um, so I have uh, one of my partners, Frankie and Gracia. She just directed the last feature film that we did that was called Vampire Dad. Um, we all get scripts from all different kinds of directions. People obviously over the years know what you do, um, and they're always trying to filter scripts through somebody. So as her as a director, she is my partner. And when she brings something to me that she likes, I'm going to pay attention mm -hmm. because for producers like me, directors are very, very important. Mm -hmm. My job is to make the creative happen for them. Mm -hmm. She is my creative. She is my partner. And I'm here to try to help her get what she wants always. So this script came from somebody else that she knows that they come from all different kinds of ways. And how do you go about funding a movie? That's the one of the most difficult and most challenging parts. Um, on the last film that was independently financed through two different investors. Mm -hmm. So I'm the person that puts the pieces together. Um, hires, staffs, um, hires department heads um, in collaboration with director um, always, always in collaboration with director. But ultimately, I'm the person that they will come to when you actually want to make the film. Mm -hmm. um, I have been approached. I do have opportunities to go where there might be money. Mm -hmm. um, but um, this is one of those challenging things. There's venture capitalists out there that do um, risk capital kind of stuff with film because filmmaking is a very risky business. Yeah. Most don't ever see the light of day. Yeah. A lot of films never get seen or they don't get seen on a mass level. So um, I would say that it takes a very calculated movement to make a film that has the potential of bringing back profit. And what is the hardest part about being a producer? The hardest part is going from zero to 100 miles an hour. That's the hardest part. So as a producer, I can work for six months. I cannot work for four months. I cannot work for six months, mm -hmm. um, especially as an independently contracted producer. Oh, I like going from 100 to zero. I enjoy that a lot. Um, and getting back to my normal life and doing the things that I like to do, just leisure stuff. Um, what's your latest project? The latest one is Vampire Dad. Um, that one we just finished. Um, that should be out in the next six months. Oh, yeah, I yeah, see it. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. wait. Cool.
Where do you think the production business is going now that, that there is so much going on online? Well, that's interesting. Um, things are changing. Yeah. Um, and I've been actually a part of a lot of um, ICO conversations, which I don't know if you're familiar. So What's initial that? coin offerings. So we're talking about cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of talk lately, and I've had a lot of people approaching me for a whole different way to finance films. Mm -hmm. And when you asked me about financing films, I just didn't kind of bring it into the equation because I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, but I have a pretty decent understanding of what people are trying to do. So since online has really changed the game and cryptocurrency is also changing the game, um, and the way I understand it is that cryptocurrency is here to bring power back to the people, mm -hmm. taking out the middle, taking out the bank, and just purely going from person to product. Mm -hmm. So it's happening in the film world. And what's happening now is that people are creating companies. So an initial coin offering would be like issuing stock, but in cryptocurrency. And people can go and finance whatever they want to see. So what's happening to me now and where I see the future of this going is this, is that people will decide what they want to watch. They will not allow the studio or the network to dictate for them what they want to see because people have agendas. People are trying to promote certain kinds of things. And then now with crypto, it's opening a whole new world of new money mm -hmm. that people have made in crypto. And this is what arguably is the future of information and the future of entertainment to a degree. So, so it's, really, it's really a changing landscape right now and I'm trying to keep up. It's, it's a lot, but Wow, yeah. so, so let me understand this. It's basically like a Kickstarter with cryptocurrencies. Exactly, and it's people, very smart. No, it's exactly, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's like taking GoFundMe, yeah. taking Kickstarter, but these people who are investing in the product, yeah. which would be, let's say, in, in my business, which by the way, this is not just my business, yeah. this is every business, uh -huh. that, but in my business, they would be having, you would have a clear dictation of what they would be getting in return for their initial investment through an initial coin offering, buying coins, cryptocurrency, yeah. and they would decide what they wanna see, but they would also be doing it with having a return that's built in, so the investment has a return to it. It's not just like GoFundMe where you give your money to GoFundMe or give your money to Kickstarter, you get nothing back except for a t-shirt. So what so if the my movie loses money? You lose. You lose, so there's still Same a deal. risk. Same okay. deal, absolutely. Okay. There's always will be a risk. If the product doesn't succeed, you don't either. You started as, an, uh, as a child actor, mm -hmm. uh, and one of your roles was Stephen Corey in Seinfeld. <laughs> yes. Uh, what was it like to be on Seinfeld? Oh God, uh, that was probably um, it was probably one of the most uh, fun jobs I did as an actor. Bad. But I'll, I'll just tell I, so I never watched the show before it. It was in their most popular time. It was in season eight. I'd never seen the show. When I originally read it, um, I uh, I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. I didn't get the humor because I never watched the show because you have to watch this show in order to understand the humor of it because it's really about the characters. That's so cool. Yeah. How did you get this role? Like, what just did you do? casting. Do you have anything else you would like to say about how to make it in America? Well, be smart. Um, work hard. So I would tell people, like, don't limit yourself. You know, We all have ideas. We all have dreams. We all have desires. Follow them. Follow them till the end of the world, but don't close your mind to other things that come around you because you may just miss your mark. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm thankfully for me, I've opened myself up so that I can see many different marks. There's many different paths. And for me, I kind of just want to show up in my life, see what's in front of me and not miss an opportunity. I love it. I love all your tips and tricks. <laughs> and thank you so much for being my here pleasure. today. My pleasure, thank thanks. You. Thanks for having me. How did I make it in America? Work hard, don't limit yourself, don't be blinded by other opportunities that may come up, show up in your life, and then work your ass off when they come.